Okay, hello everyone. My name is Mark Collette. I am a Masters of Philosophy student at the University of Salford, and I'm also part of a high for knowledge exchange with Electricity Northwest, where as part of that knowledge exchange, I'm researching the efficient management of environmental control within electrical substations, and it's that research I'll be presenting on today. So to conduct this research, it's necessary to reach the following aims. The first of which is to evaluate the existing methods of environmental control in electrical substations and then to identify, implement and measure the effectiveness of interventions to improve the efficient management of environmental control within electrical substations. So a bit of background on the subject for you. Electricity Northwest own and operate 558 grid and primary substations and there are over 5,000 in the UK. So grid and primary substations uh, which are the type applicable to this research, operate a voltage transformation from one high voltage to another high voltage. And um, this means they're a bit bigger than the ones you might be familiar with on the street corner. And there's a picture just for a sense of scale in the bottom left hand side of the screen there. And within these buildings, there's a requirement to maintain a low humidity environment of 50% relative humidity or less. And this is to protect the electrical assets within by preventing partial discharge from occurring, the effects of which can be very significant, including um, damage to electricity network, uh, risk of injury to those in and around the substation, and power outages as well. So the current strategy for environmental control utilises condensate dehumidifiers to remove moisture from the inside, and electric convector heaters to provide a minimum temperature of 10 degrees C, which is required for the operation of the dehumidifiers and those systems are pictured in the right hand side of the screen there. So approaching this research, first of all it was necessary to identify three archetypal substations for investigation as case studies and this was done by looking at asset management data and identifying what makes an archetypal substation and principally it is a substation that was built and commissioned in the 1960s as a flat roof and is of brick and block work construction. So the three picked all demonstrate those characteristics. Then to understand what was going on inside the substation in respect of environmental control, a remote monitoring campaign was undertaken, monitoring the energy consumption of the environmental control systems and monitoring the internal environment itself in respect of temperature and RH. It was also necessary to evaluate the building fabric to see how this was contributing to the environmental control and this was done through site investigation works, such as taking in situ U-value measurement and conducting air permeability testing. So to calculate the expected dehumidification demand, this was done through a moisture balance analysis, where we equated the extraction rate from the um, dehumidification systems against the calculated moisture ingress through uncontrolled air permeability. And to calculate the expected heating demand, this was done through constructing a computational thermal model of the substations and inputting the minimum temperature requirements and information gained from the site investigation. Then a series of interventions were devised based on the following principles, uh, reducing undesirable air infiltration, segregation of conditioned and non-conditioned spaces, lowering the thermal conductivity of building fabric and replacing the heating control systems. And some of these interventions are pictured below. Just to pick out a couple, we um, replaced a roof decking with an insulation layer as well. Um, we sealed some unused cable penetrations and we erected an insulated partition between an unused decommissioned part of the substation and an area that was still operational. And we replaced it, the heating controls as well, which you can see along the bottom there. So results, what did we find out? So within the three substations, this table shows the monthly average of temperature and relative humidity recorded. And there's two really important things to note here. Uh, in all three sites, there is an over conditioning of temperature. Uh, this is most notable at a high level in Southeast Macclesfield, where we saw throughout the depths of winter and throughout the heating season, that was in fact heated beyond 18 degrees C against a minimum requirement of 10 degrees C and there is an under conditioning of humidity demonstrated in all three subs 
but most notably at a low level in our Pendleton site where humidity levels reached on average over 70% against a target of 50%. So the associated energy demand, unsurprisingly, there's a performance gap between what we expect and what we've calculated and what we've measured. So in respect of the heating demand, uh, this is significantly greater in the case of southeast Macclesfield. Uh, it's almost three times as much in a Windermere over seven times as great. And this has been caused primarily through sensor drift. So the heat controls have aged with time and they're no longer to obtain to um, maintain a specified set point. Uh, so much so that they are overheating the substations resulting in excessive energy being, being consumed. In respect of dehumidification, there is the reverse performance gap. So the measured dehumidification is a lot less than what we calculated it to be. And this is corresponding in the high dehumidification, high humidity levels, excuse me. And this is caused through sensor positioning, wherein the three sites analyzed, the control humidistats were positioned very close to the dehumidification systems, resulting in the immediate area around the dehumidification system to be conditioned that holistically the substation is not um, holistically conditioned to 50% RH. In terms of the event interventions devised and installed, um, the potential savings are there, uh, resulting in a payback period of under 10 years and uh, reducing the heating and dehumidification demand. So the conclusions, what we found out, what does this mean? So the remote monitoring campaign has provided a sort of sense check on the current systems and demonstrated that they're not operating efficiently. And as a result, uh, the internal environment and the assets housed within that internal environment are at an increased risk of damage from partial discharge. The performance gap uh, provides an opportunity for improving the efficiency by reducing the consumption associated with overheating by replacing controls with accurate and appropriate systems. And the straightforward interventions to improve the building envelope can further improve the efficiency by reducing the heating and dehumidification demands. And as part of further works, post-intervention monitoring is to be carried out to verify the calculations made and the and to verify that the benefits of the interventions are realised. And also this research is going to expand to cover a net zero carbon substation, which is currently being developed and constructed by Electricity Northwest. Thank you very much for listening. I look forward to answering your questions on the day. Cheers.